Good evening, and welcome to this week's Black Mental Health is Black Health. I'm your host, Bronwyn Lucas, and we have a wonderful guest, Darla Gooden. And in a moment, she'll introduce herself. But if you've been here before, you know we always start with a few deep breaths. Why? It allows you to decompress from the day, have that mental husa, and just calm down and relax. Something that you can do any time of the day when needed. But it helps you focus. It helps you ooh, stuff off the cares of the day. So I'm going to count in very slowly to four. And as I count in slowly, you will breathe in slowly. Then I'll say breathe out and you do the same. We'll do three deep cleansing breaths. Let's get started. Breathe in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. One more, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. Just 30 seconds to allow yourself to wusa for a moment. How was that for you, Darla, those few deep breaths? Oh, it's always refreshing. Awesome. Well, as I said, our guest is Miss Darla Gooden. And Darla, you get to tell us who you are and tell us something cool about you. Well, of course, my name is Darla Gooden, as you stated. Um, I am a mother of six. I'm divorced. I love people. And the coolest thing about me is I just got came back from London, Rome, and Greece. I've been traveling to parts of Europe. So that's about the coolest thing I can think of right now. That is cool. Have you recovered yet? I'm trying. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being on tonight, even though jet lag is real and you're still there. Mm -hmm. Darla and I are sponsors of a class on forgiveness, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight, which is why I really wanted her here. We are a part of an organization uh, founded by Darla, and it's called Hope, Healing Oppressed People Everywhere. And Hope is um, sponsoring or this class. We are here to get, it's one way to heal is by forgiveness. Darla, could you tell our audience a little about the organization Hope? Well, Hope started after I've written the book, The Restore of the Breach. I moved to Houston, Texas, and I met some powerful, caring professionals. And these are some awesome people that came across and they wanted to bring in, I wanted to add them to what I wanted to do because the book was regarding pedophilia and I wanted to get a platform built where I can bring in some caring professionals such as a therapist and people who worked at CPS and um, um, who worked for the police department and just bring in people that will be able to provide information to the community so that they can be better protect their families, um, whatever they were going through or their children or how to keep them safe. It's so various different topics that I knew that would impact communities that will foster change for the communities. Um, so that's kind of how hope came about. We were talking, Bronwyn, myself and different ones, when we were wanting to put together workshops, we just came up with the word hope, which is healing oppressed people everywhere. That's the acronym for it. And we've been running with that for, oh, Jesus, what is it, about eight, nine years now? Yes, probably? I can't believe and it. It's so been that long. That's yes. how it came about. And we wanted to now begin to, to do even more with that. So that's why we're here tonight to talk about one of the ebooks. We had one that came out in January called The Blueprint for Emotional Healing. And that, um, of course, that course has uh, since have been have taken place and it was really insightful, very good and very good feedback from those who were participants in that class. 
However, I wanted to expand a little bit more and um, I felt the Lord was pulling us more towards forgiveness because at the end of all of this, it'll be a, another one on transformation. But I know forgiveness had played a big role in, in, in our lives and hard for people to get over is when they, uh, the word forgiveness. And that's part of how we wanted to put emphasis this time on that besides the blueprint for emotional healing. So that's where we are today. And we're encouraging everyone and anyone, of course, to be a part of that. So that's where we are. So I, as she own stated, own. you know, we're uh, okay. As she stated, we are sponsoring a class and we'll give you the details about that. But tonight we're just going to give you a little overview, a little teaser of what you might get in the class. And we'll, and the whole thing, <clears throat> the class is about forgiveness. So uh, in the first week, we're going to just talk about defining forgiveness from various points of view. Um, and I'll share some different people's definition of forgiveness when we get to the class. But Darla, I'll ask you, what is your definition for forgiveness? Well, my definition is the process of letting go of resentment, anger, and the desire for revenge against someone or someone who has wronged you. And it's a conscious decision. And I always keep saying that it's forgiveness is a decision. And you have to be conscious about, do I really want to hold on to this? Do I really want to live my life harboring or having a grudge against someone? And sometimes we do that not knowing the ramifications or the impact that it can have on our physical body, our mental, and we had talked about that earlier previously, but it's it's a big subject and it's something that you know that you're going to have to deal with on a regular basis because life happens, whether it's our children, whether it's our jobs or things that happen on our jobs, whether it's our siblings, whether it's our parents, um, it's just so many different ways that it you know, it can have an impact on you in many different arenas and areas of your life. But I think it's something that, from the most part, I can see where people struggle with that one word. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not like, like children. Children are so easy because you can hit them and, and they, I mean, they can hit each other and play around. And then they're mad at each other one moment because you hit them. I mean, they hit each other, but it's amazing to me how they can easily let it go and begin to play mm -hmm. back again with each other after they have offended each other. You know, right. it's really weird how they can let that go and move on. But as adults, it's a little bit more stickier and it's a little bit more harder. And I think we make it much harder than what it is, uh, of course because we internalize it and we, 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 we simmer on it a little bit more. And I talked about that one day that, you know, sometimes it's hard to get over something when you keep talking about it, you know, mm. sometimes you gotta get to the point where after you get through therapy, you gotta let it go. We do. We have to finally move forward. You know, there are different, def there are different views. And in the course, we're going to look at a biblical view, a psychological view, and a medical view of forgiveness. And it's important. And I always talk about the fact that our physical, mental, and spiritual lives are intertwined, and you really can't separate them. And forgiveness impacts all of them. Uh, from a um, medical point of view, according to uh, a doctor at Johns Hopkins, um, she says, there is an enormous physical burden to being hurt and disappointed. Chronic anger puts you into the fight or flight mode, which results in numerous changes in heart rate, blood pressure, and immune response. Um, those changes then increase the risk of depression, heart disease, diabetes, among other uh, conditions. Forgiveness, however, calms stress uh, levels, leads to improved health. That is a physical health issue that is impacted by forgiveness. From a psychological point of view, forgiveness is willing, this is what the American Psychological Association says, forgiveness is willfully putting aside feelings of resentment toward an indi individual who has committed a wrong. 
been unfair or hurtful, otherwise harmed you in any way. And later on, we'll talk about how um, even from that point of view, it impacts your mood and your uh, depression can be increased with unforgiveness, just as it said with the medical model. And lastly, the biblical view. Uh, forgiveness is, of others is a fundamental to the gospel. There are numerous numerous Bible verses that address forgiveness. Uh, one that I will talk about now is Colossians 3 to 13, which says, bear ye each other and forgive one another. If you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. It's pretty straightforward. Um, also in Matthew, it talks about um, forgive uh, when you pray. Many people have heard the Lord's prayer. Forgive us mm -hmm. as we forgive others. And then you move down in there. It makes it more plain. Uh, Lord, you will be forgiven as you forgive. Ouch. Mm. <laughs> you want to be forgiven by the Lord, but mm. and we this course is taken from a Christian perspective, but most major world religions talk about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It is it is essential to any spiritual well-being. So just looking at the definition, that is what forgiveness is all about. And that's how the course is um that's how the course looks at it. It looks like we really want to address those areas. Um, that's the foundation um, for forgiveness. So, Darla, have you ever had um, a situation in which it was difficult to forgive? I think most people do. We've all had something that we, you know, makes it very difficult to um, deal with. Uh, of course, as you know, as I've written my book, uh, The Restore of the Breach, I had to come up against some things. And there's a lot of playing parts in there that I had to forgive. And when dealing with a pedophile, of course, that was a challenge. But the ultimate challenge, I told you, was trying to forgive myself um, because of, you know, the lack of, the lack of knowledge. And even though I... I didn't do anything wrong. It just was so hard to know that I had these precious children and under my watch, something like this could happen um, when it came to the molestation of the children, of my children. So that was very difficult for me to overcome um, and to forgive myself for not knowing, not watching, not being aware. And the way it helped me overcome it was being able to remind myself, even through therapy, that I couldn't be there with my kids 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. that I wasn't the person who committed the crime, mm -hmm. um, that I was groomed. You know, sometimes our minds play tricks on us and it makes us think about other things that um, <clears throat> that will cause us to be, to, to put us in a place where we feel defeated. But the good thing was, is that I had a great support system and I had people around me at some time, at, at different times to remind me that we're nobody's perfect mm -hmm. and things do happen, but it's how we deal with the situation and how we allow ourselves to process through all of that and being able to understand what was really true. And what was true was, this person needed to take the blame and not me. Right, right. <clears throat> and so when you finally can get there and you accept that, then you know that healing now begins to take place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in talking about that, you really highlighted the uh, whole concept of self-forgiveness, which is something we also will cover in this course in the third week. When we often think of forgiveness, so often people don't think, oh, I got to forgive me. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said it can be the hardest because you're the only person you with 24 seven, right. you know, so, you know, every thought, even with the person who is the offender, you don't know their background. You don't know what led them to it. Not that sometimes you don't even care because what they did was so egregious, but you don't know, right. but you, you know yourself. Right. And so it's hard. Like you say, there's a guilt. For those of you who don't know Darla's um, book, Restore the Breach, which can, oh, shameless plug here for you, which I believe you can get on Amazon. 
uh, and probably other platforms, but it chronicles the story of um, her children who were molested by the youth minister at their church. It is not salacious detailed. It is a story of healing. And forgiveness had to take place in order for her to get to this point, including forgiveness of herself. I mean, as parents, there are a lot of things that we can um, feel guilty for. That was a major issue. But even as parents, there are things if your children aren't where you want them to be or something has happened, <clears throat> you can assume guilt. And sometimes we assume guilt is not even ours. Mm -hmm. Just okay. as you said, you were groomed for the abuse. The um, A pedophile doesn't just, this is just a side note, a pedophile doesn't just groom the child. Right. The parent can be groomed as well because Absolutely. the parent has to be groomed in order to um, allow them access to the child. Absolutely. You know, and it's, uh, which is a weight reason you can not want to forgive yourself, but yeah, it was grooming. And right. um, so we get caught up in saying, oh, I can't believe I did that. I can't forgive myself for doing that. But, mm, um, you know, one reason that we do, I think forgiveness is so important is when you don't forgive, that person has some control over you. Um, I'll explain what I mean. And then Darla, I'll ask you if you agree or disagree with my concept. So my concept is this. If there is somebody who who has wronged you, they hurt you, whether it's a little hurt or whether it's a major hurt, but they wronged you and you still feel it. And every time you think about that person, maybe, oh, I just can't stand them. Or, oh, every time I see them, I get upset again. Or, oh, I just get so angry. Why? Because, ooh, their face is on TV. When that happens, you could have been in a great mood and you see them, you think about them, somebody mentions them and you get angry again. They have control over your mood because your mood changes at the thought of their name, at the sight of them. Or maybe just seeing a car that they, you know, you know, they drive, drove that blue Cadillac and I saw a blue Cadillac just like this. And I got mad all over again because it reminded me of them. Well, when that happens, they're controlling your mood. Mm -hmm. Should someone who hurt you, should your offender have any control over you? No. Forgiveness allows you to take that control back. They don't deserve it. So that's my theory about control and forgiveness. Darla, what do you think? Well, you're, you're right there on it. You know, that's why I want people to take this course. <laughs> because Bronwyn is phenomenal at teaching this, I'm telling you. <laughs> She's the best therapist there is. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> but what I I always tell her, forgiveness is a process. You know, I'm not trying to say everything that happened to me and I let go and instantly. No, it was a process. But I was willing to allow myself to understand that I could not stay with anger and resentment mm -hmm. against anyone. So I had to allow myself, even if it was internally internalized that it was about me forgiving me, I needed to work through that because I knew that it's taking something from me. If it's not doing anything but physically dealing with my health or um, the relationships that I had with other people, um, it, 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 it can mess you up. And my thing is, you're right. No one deserves that much power. You're giving the power over you. And no one deserves that much power when it comes to you. You are important. You matter. And your well-being matters. For me, losing sleep, I am not going to lose sleep over anybody anymore because I have to work through it. I want to walk in power, but you got to get your power back. And every time you allow yourself to be angry and them to pull that from you, what you're saying to them is you can have my power. No, mm -hmm. your power belongs to you and that power you have to stand in. And so we don't always look at the aspects of what the harm that it does to us. And what I like about this course 
is going to bring you into that. It's going to bring you into things that you don't even think about and how it's going to have been impacting you. But you're going to get free. And this course is designed for you to walk in that level of freedom and get back your power. Well, thank you um, for those kind words a few minutes ago. You know, I want to give you, we're going to talk about in the class some of the um, hindrances to forgiveness. And I want to bring up maybe just two of them. And one of them is um, that I want to hold on to my anger. I want to remember and never forget. I want to point this out. There is a concept of forgive and forget. And man, I want to really break that down. Forgive and forget is a profoundly misguided concept because what we think of is that, oh, I just got to forgive it. Forget it. Well, from a technical scientific point of view, we really don't ever forget totally because that's why I think about someone who may have some forms of dementia and they can remember things from long, long ago. Maybe not what happened five minutes ago, but from right. five, 15 years ago, because those looking. thoughts are there. They're implanted in your brain. It is written in your brain and it doesn't get erased. What you forget is the... Um, emotional connection in terms of the the emotional hurt mm -hmm. and some people say well i need to hold on to my hurt so i'll never let it happen again holding on to that hurt as we said from a medical point of view is eating away at you right yes you do need to remember you need to know who that abuser is right i don't if that especially if that person may uh maybe it wasn't even physical or sexual or emotional abuse but it's something and that person is still in your life on the fringes, you need to know I got to keep a safe distance from you. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness also does not mean that that person is going to be in your life. Right. I can forgive you. Right. And I'm going to keep you over there. Right. You're not going to be in my life. Forgiveness does not mean I give you the right to still be in my life. Absolutely. Because some things are so egregious that a person does not need to be in your life. In a case of sexual abuse, yes, we want that person to be behind mm -hmm. bars. Absolutely. But there's emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there are people who have an emotional abuse really is just as devastating. Oh, there are absolutely. levels of emotional abuse that is just as devastating, but the person's not going to go to jail for that. Mm -hmm. But either way, you have been harmed. So if this person is still in your life, is still around, they may not need a place in your life. Doesn't mean that you don't forgive them. I forgive mm -hmm. you, but I'm not going, I'm taking back my control and my power, and I don't have to have you interacting with me daily. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, so that's, you know, so that forgive and forget it's, and for some people, they don't want to forgive because forgive and forget is so intertwined in our society mm -hmm. that they feel like if, well, no, I don't want to forget. But I, mm -hmm. as I said, I encourage you to forgive the pain, forget mm -hmm. the pain, let mm -hmm. go of the pain. You might need to remember so you don't go down that same road. Right. If you okay. were driving your mm -hmm. car and, oh man. I'm going to take this right turn and you take this right turn and it leads you down a dark dead end alley. Mm -hmm. You need to remember not to go down, turn right at that intersection again. Absolutely. And um, you know, go on. And, and it's so true because one thing I do believe is you can't have selective amnesia. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you can't, <laughs> I want to remember the bad, but I also don't want to, I, I, I forgive you. But I remember the bad enough to say, I got to keep going. You know, I, I, I'm not going to, you know, that part, I got to keep going. I'm not going to just say, well, you know, I forgive you and we're going to come back to this. Right. You know, some things you cannot go back to. You have to know that you have to keep going and moving your life forward. And that is a key. Moving forward, allowing yourself to move forward. Um, and that's what where the forget and the forgive comes in. I'm not going to be bound by what happened. I'll quickly mention one more of the things. And in the class, we'll delve even deeper. And this is, I want them to apologize. They did mm -hmm. me wrong. Um, what if you never get an apology? Right. What if they don't feel they did anything wrong? Absolutely. What if the person is deceased? Absolutely. 
So what holding on to the need for an apology may not happen. May not happen. What do you do? What do you do then, Darla? You don't get no apology. Well, for me, if they even if they don't apologize, one of the things is is I've let go again the word power. I've taken my power back and I continue to move my life forward. I don't want to harbor any resentment in my heart for anyone. The grace that God has given me when he forgave me for the things that I've done is the same grace I give back to someone else. I want to live my life knowing that I am free from any anger, any resentment, and the desire to seek revenge. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. He said he will repay. And one thing I do believe about life, whatever you sow, you will reap. And we don't always think about that. But whatever that person sown or whatever you may have sown, you reap that. So my thing is, I want to get back into that safe place of life of freedom. And I don't want anyone to have power over me. So whatever I need to do to work on my heart, even it means me not talking about it. Because some things I just, to me, for me to get over it, I can't keep talking about it over and over again. I got to let it go. Somewhere I got to stop talking about it because I want to walk in that freedom mm -hmm. that Christ has already given to me. And I want to continue to know that just like I give that grace, somebody's going to give that grace back to me. I want someone to forgive me as well because I'm not perfect and I'm subject to error. But I want to be conscious of that. And that's what helps me to forgive, knowing that I'm human, I blow it too, but I want someone to forgive me as well. And, you know, um, I'll just throw this out. In the course, you'll learn about decisional forgiveness and emotional forgiveness. I'm not mm -hmm. going to tell you now. You got to find out later. Right. Um, <laughs> so let's tell them how they can sign up for this class. Um, we have a platform, PayHip, and I will have to drop the link. Um, I'll have it on the Facebook page um, where you're currently watching this. I will we'll have it up tomorrow. If you are listening to this or watching this, you can message on um, Facebook or you can call 682-272-3942. Two seven two three nine four nine, and you can get information. Even easier, you can go to ablecc.org, a b l e c c dot org, and look for the upcoming events tab. And yeah, it'll have a little sheet for you to fill out. That's really probably the easiest way. Just go to ablecc.org, and we'll send you the information you need. Before I give my final um, call to action, Darla, do you have any final comments you want to make? Oh, absolutely. You do not want to miss this class on forgiveness. And when I say Bronwyn Lucas is fabulous, woo, the class is that good. I'm telling you, you need to be in the room. You do not want to miss this because the Lord would not have brought this to me if he did not want you to be a part of this. This is to liberate you and set you free. This is the work that we do because we love you so much that we don't want to see or know that you're not walking in the wholeness that God requires for all of us. So please take a look at where you are. Look at what's happening in your life. And if you're challenged with that word forgiveness, I encourage you to come into the room and allow the Lord to minister to you through myself and also the main person I'm talking about, and that's Robin Lucas. Well, thank you. Again, thank you for those kind words. And I'm going to use her closing remarks as my call to action. Join our class. And I always have to say, vote, vote, vote. Be an educated voter, not just in a presidential election, any election that is in your city, be an educated voter. But we are in a presidential election year. So be aware, make informed decisions. I am Bronwyn Lucas, the Black Couch Therapist, here to help you become a better you. For more information, once again, go to ablecc.org. That's A-B-L-E. 
cc.org. See you next week and really hope to see you in our class. Oh, by the way, it is virtual. I didn't say mm-hmm. that. It is virtual. It starts um, this third Tuesday in June, which is June 21st, and it goes for four weeks. We'll see you then. Bye now. Bye-bye. <laughs>